Hello, I have got with me a BMW M5 and Dan. And I've come in the Mercedes AMG E63S, which is the benchmark in the Super Saloon class and the car the M5 needs to beat. So we're gonna go for a couple of drives, we're gonna find out which is more comfortable, which is more refined, which is more exciting, which is better, because that is what we do basically, isn't it? So if you like that, please subscribe. First and foremost though, we are gonna test these two. So we're starting off in the AMG. Let's remind ourselves what the benchmark for this class is all about. I have to say, I'm a huge fan of this car. I, oh, think, it's, I think it's mighty. Yeah, it rides, it's pretty firm, isn't it? But it's not, it's not harsh. I think it's fairly close to being borderline, actually. I think it, on the smooth road like this, it's fine. You probably wouldn't want it any worse than this, would you? I think when you get onto, just over there, there's one of the most challenging roads that you'll find anywhere around this country. You know, it's a real, real nasty bit of tarmac. And I've driven this car along there, and it does start to feel a bit brittle right. and a little bit harsh. But and generally, is, no, I don't, I don't think it's a huge problem. Yeah, and I suppose after all, this is supposed to be an executive saloon, isn't it? But I mean, I know, it's, I know they're super saloons, I know they're fast, I know they're anything else, but it's supposed to be a car you drive every day. It's an everyday So it's got to be. What I like about this, and what I like about V8 AMGs in particular, is that they are quite exciting, aren't they? It always, it always feels to me like you're in something quite special. It does, it does. From the sound you get on startup to... Yeah, exhaust note when you're ripping through the revs. And also, when, when you're hammering this car along a good twisty stretch of road, mm. I think it's A, freakishly capable for something as big and heavy as this, yeah. and B, actually, it is really good fun. You can have a proper drive in this thing and really enjoy it. Yeah. It does make a good noise, doesn't it? It does make a good noise. AMG kind of consistently are perhaps the only ones who can make a turbo engine sound really exciting. Yeah. So what's it like uh, steering, braking, handling, etc.? That's the kind of standout thing for me about this car actually is how really, really excellent it is to drive along a twisting road like this one. Yeah. Somehow it doesn't feel its weight, it doesn't really feel its size. I think the steering is really sweet actually it could it could be completely numb it's e-pass it's a big heavy car it could yeah. be completely numb but i think you can really trust it lean on it um, and place the car exactly where you want to corner after corner which yeah it just feels fantastic through there actually which is unusual i think when i first drove this car on the launch back in portugal i thought there we go super saloons in terms of what we can expect from them dynamically yeah have been lifted to a new level oh totally yeah i thought so because i know it's four-wheel drive and everything but we do we always do that pure arse stick it in rear-wheel drive and yeah drift the bejesus out of it and it's great <laughs> it, is that as well. it does that as well <laughs> it's fantastic would you ever actually use the drift mode in this or two-wheel drive mode in the other car i wonder i wonder i wonder how many owners do more than once or twice just to try it just to give it a go just to bin it on the way out of a cars and coffee meet <laughs> otherwise engine so it's got a little bit more power than that m5 it's a mega engine isn't it a mega it's engine. engine it's it's responsive oh that feels it, that felt really nice from here it feels really quick really strong more than 600 horsepower in a saloon car is completely balmy. Hey, mate, can you, you know, you're a bit younger than me, but when the McLaren F1 came out, what, 93, 94, somebody said to you, yeah, in a quarter of a century's time, you will be able to have a stock saloon car, which will be very refined, very comfortable, very normal, very docile in everyday driving with an automatic transmission mm. and lots of safety kit and everything else. By the way, it'll have as much power as one of these. And you'll get it serviced Oh, once yeah, a year, yeah, yeah. maybe 15,000 yeah. miles or something. Yeah, there won't, be, there won't be one bloke in the world who can service it. You know, you'll be able to take it to any Mercedes dealer, they'll plug it in, they'll just go, yeah, that's fine. It's a phenomenal it's achievement, actually. What well, the industry has achieved with this level yeah. of car is something yeah. else. Separately, BMW and Mercedes have arrived at basically the same technical solution for a super saloon. Yeah. 4.0 or 4. Uh, that's point a fair something point, actually. Yeah. litre V8. Yeah. yeah. Twin turbocharged, yeah. Four wheel drive, auto yeah. tra auto transmission. Yeah, rather straight than auto, no DCT, DCTs. no manuals. It's almost a shame that they're so 
technically similar because it is a well, variety is the spice, the spice of life, isn't it? Yeah. But I think where there is consistency, there is truth, right? So, oh, Christ, mate, where's that? Is that, one of, is that one of yours? That's just that, some Eastern that... mysticism. Oh, okay. I think I think for both of, both manufacturers to arrive at the same solution, it it just demonstrates, doesn't it, that yeah, yeah, yeah. this must be it the must best be the way. way. It must be the way to do it. You're yeah, right. They're bang on the money as well. Absolutely. Pre and post options. Absolutely. I, I do you know? Do you remember how much this this one is with options? What I know is that they're both. Upwards of a hundred thousand pounds. A <laughs> hundred grand. That is, yeah, that is, that is so much money. It's so much money. But as you pointed out to me before, if you well, if you've got thirty grand in a car that you're putting down as yeah, a deposit, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then it's what I don't know what it is, eight hundred pound a month or whatever, thousand pound a month, yeah. and that's just what it is. You know, it's just like yes, I can afford X amount a month to have a car. Mm. And that's what the, that's how it works, isn't it? Nobody actually goes in and writes a cheque for one hundred four thousand pounds. No, and not many people even look at that final figure. They're just looking well, at the monthly difference, is it? Yeah, yeah. As an optional extra, there are things on that BMW in particular, and things on this that you look at the price and you think, "Well, that's absurd. Who would pay two thousand pounds for that?" But of course, nobody does, do they? They no. just go as an extra four quid a month, though. Fine, yeah, fine. Yeah, that's quite quick. It is quick, isn't it? Right. Will the BMW A feel this quick? or B, sound up that good. This to me feels like it rides more smoothly yeah. than the E63. A little less edge. Yeah. Just kind of rounded off a little bit more rather than skitting and thudding. Yeah. I'm interested to know what you think about the interiors because they're, they're very, very different. And yet, I, I don't feel like I've got a preference either way. No, I really just, I, I just don't. Like I say, visually they're very different, aren't they? Mm. But ergonomically, they're both great. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a particular preference on steering wheels. I don't have a particular preference on. I like the fact this has got part touchscreen these days. I mean, I don't always like the touchscreen mm. very much. But when you're when you're stationary, actually to flick Sometimes around a map easier. or something like that is quite is quite easy. Mm. These drive buttons are probably easier to slightly easier to see. And I've got two shortcuts, which is quite cool. So I can select, well, I can preset whatever I want. So, so you I have would comfy go mode and full comfy mode. mode and full noisy mode. And yeah. that's probably what I'd have is just mm. full comfort, flat out, flat out. That's probably what you go for. Yeah. Um, as we said in the E-Class, you know, that they end up doing very much the same thing in terms of the fact they have different drive modes, different damper modes, different engine modes, different gearbox modes. I wouldn't mind if they just turn around and go, here's how it's meant to be. I we've, find that. we've but, worked it out, we've nailed the ride. Yeah, exactly. We've got some body control yeah. in there as well. Exactly. Turns out we've got 100 engineers who are all experts in this, so we know how it's supposed to drive and you don't. So that's so that's what we've done. But anyway. I wonder if people are, are seduced by all this stuff when they go into the showroom and they just think so. it's mega. I guess so. so. Does that sound as exciting as the E-Class? It doesn't really, does it? It doesn't really. It sounds exciting enough mm. I think probably just I don't think in isolation you'd necessarily actually it's okay it's not bad is it actually and do you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna call it here I think this feels a bit faster That's... this has got about 600 doesn't it and the Mercedes has got a tiny bit more it? yeah the Mercedes has got a bit more power but... yeah but this yeah I think the delivery in this is the throttle response is really quick step off from rest actually is a little bit over sharp and also the the brake Pedal. This has got the optional ceramic disc, five and a half grand. What well, to you, sir? Actually, I think you'll find probably 18, 20 pounds a month. But but they're, they they they're quite sensitive as well. They, you know, they, the initial bite is really yeah. firm, and then yeah. the modulation is a bit tricky too. So I think from that point of view, it's almost as if BMW wants you to feel in some way that this car is a super saloon, even though it doesn't necessarily do it through its noise or ride quality. Yeah. Uh, or even the steering feel. Steering's pretty light in this mode, quite smooth. You're not getting loads back at any point, mm. but then it's, what, a 1900 kilogram car? What's it gonna do? Just that little modulation of some of the pedals and stuff, you think actually this could be a little bit, mm. could be a little bit tiresome, but fundamentally, it's a quieter, more refined, more comfortable, more comfortable, is that fair? Than the E class, I'd, I'd say I'd say it's got a slightly smoother ride quality, yeah. and, and therefore, yeah, it is. So actually, you can, you can characterise the two cars quite distinctly, can't you? The, the Mercedes yeah. is probably the harder edged, slightly rawer thing, yeah, and this is probably ever so slightly more refined. Which that seems like a reversal of roles, doesn't it? For 
BMW M and AMG? Yeah, I wonder if that is a reversal of roles, because when AMG started, it made kind of hot roddy mm. versions of pretty luxurious, refined saloons, doesn't it? And BMW's M, if you go back as far as the E30 and stuff, it was it was making sports yeah. cars, wasn't it, really? And yeah, 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 now, you're right. I wonder if sometimes we fall into this trap of thinking that that's what an M car should be like, mm. is, is in an early M car. And actually, for the past 20 years, they haven't really, they given, haven't us, really, they haven't really given us those except for the competition pack stuff. Yeah, that's true. And AMG has morphed into this into this V8 dominated, fairly, you know, fairly overtly sporting thing that M just is not. All right, so in summary, you've got a sports car for the weekend. And you need a car for 10 to 15,000 miles a year. They're both on the same money. They're both the same size. They're both as practical as each other. They both do They'll probably give you the same economy in the real world. Yeah. It's your everyday car because it's discreet enough to take to client meetings. It's big enough for the family. If you were a golfist, it would be fine for that. Which are you going to have? I've, I'm finding this one extremely tough to call. It's really hard. I, I, it's, I'm, really hard. Yeah, I, it's, a, it's been a while since I've been a part of a, a twin test that's been as tight as this. Yeah. So it might come down to personal preference. It might be, maybe you think the, the Mercedes looks great and the BMW doesn't, in which case that's probably a good enough reason. Yeah. For me, oof, I don't know. It probably depends on the day of the week. But I do think the M5's slight extra layer of comfort might make it an easier, more enjoyable everyday companion. I agree, I, yeah, I agree. I think if I've got another car in the garage for the weekend, mm. I'm going to be happier, I think, climbing into the M5 when the weather is a bit rubbish and I just want to make a discreet getaway. I think if I was spending more time in it or it was my only car, I might have to have the extra yes. specialness of the AMG. Yeah, that extra little edge, yeah. that little, little bit of excitement. Mm. But we need a winner. <laughs> Come on. Come on, no fence sitting. Oh, God. It's so hard. I think this is probably the better car. Overall, yeah, I think it's the more complete car. So from that purpose, even though it's not necessarily the one I would buy all the time, depending on my circumstances, from that point of view, I think this is this is more complete, more yeah. rounded. It does more things at either end of the spectrum. Therefore, it's the one I would have. There we go. M5, latest M5, the new M5, the best super saloon on set.